Oh, look at that one. Oh, I'm getting five of that one. Hey, it's me, Cisco Boris. Here's what's coming up by Gardening with Cisco. Meet the Tree Whisperer, a Bainbridge Island doctor who specializes in saving big trees. Worms are wonderful. We'll show you how to build a home for the little guys. We've got dips you'll want to make for your next get together, and we've got some perfect winter plants that'll look great in your January garden. All of this is coming up right now on Gardening with Cisco. Cisco Morris. And I'm Megan Black. Welcome to Gardening with Cisco. You know, I love our tradition here. Right around this time of the year, we sit back, take a break, contemplate the year that's gone by, welcome the new year with a nice hot chocolate, someplace warm and cozy. Just kick back. We all need to take a break, don't we? Oh, yeah. You don't get cozier than this. The library at Salish Lodge. Oh, la, la. I love it. You know, I hate to do it, but we got to get to work here. <laughs> Our first story is about a man on Bainbridge Island. He has taken tree hugging to a whole new <laughs> level. And this story comes from my colleague at Evening Magazine, Michael King. Richard, we're ready. All set. Nobody's ever done what Olaf Ribeiro and his team are about to attempt. We had to move this at, uh, at the most inopportune moment. Yeah. Yeah. But I have faith that the trees will cooperate. Conventional wisdom says you don't move large trees at the height of the growing season. But renovation plans at Bainbridge High School cannot wait. So these trees gotta go either to the wood chipper or a new home. So wonderful. I'm so happy. <laughs> they will hopefully have a happy ending here and a new beginning elsewhere, thanks to Olaf. Is she spraying you that with water or you think it's okay? I think it's okay, it looks okay to me. These cherry trees were planted at the school by Japanese American students in the 1930s. We should do everything possible to save them because they're part of the history of this island. Like a nervous parent, he oversees the three tree move. The largest root ball weighs 25,000 pounds. That'll work. So they need a 75-foot crane and a nine-man crew to delicately place the trees on a couple flatbeds for the mile-long trip. Okay, here goes the first two. This is what Olaf does. He rescues trees that most consider doomed. His toolbox does include that giant crane and big trucks. But his work doesn't always stop traffic. He also uses a microscope, checking the roots and the soil for tiny attackers. I look up and I can see the colonies in there. Then I go and put it under the scope. Better than anyone else in the world, this tree surgeon is able to diagnose disease underground. That's why he's been featured in the Wall Street Journal and on the Today Show. From an island west of Seattle, where a scientist may have found the fountain of youth for ancient trees. Precisely. But this is not about fame or money. Though he is in great demand, Olaf only charges $75 to run a sample through his backyard laboratory. And my goal is to make sure that my grandchildren are able to look at a big tree in nature and not have to look at a book and say, wow, that must have been a big tree. Saving trees is not just what he does, it is who he is. This question seems appropriate. If you could be a tree, what kind of tree would you be? I think I'd like to be an oak tree, because an oak tree is one of those that I've looked at. It's always sturdy and has a really beautiful form, and it looks like it'll live forever. Olaf thinks trees can live just about forever, or at least much longer than we think they can. Who would think in this little backyard? He calls it the last chance garden. Every plant around his house was diseased or left for dead. Now, a bush from New Zealand, a flower from South Africa, 
and some roses from Green Lake flourish in his care. I tend to get things growing too well. Like the three cherry trees now enjoying a cool breeze at Sakai School on Bainbridge. We returned a month after their treacherous journey to their new home. It's looking good. Still the well. doctor says all three are going to make it. And I look to see if there's any bleeding, because that tells you that the tree has an internal problem. Sakai School was named after Kay Nakao's dad. She was an eighth grader when the trees were planted at the high school seven decades ago. Now it's fitting they're thriving at Sakai. It was that one. And it came around the bend there, and oh, I got a lump in my throat, and the tears just filled my eyes. And he does all this, not just because he loves trees, but because they love us. Trees just love everybody. <laughs> it doesn't matter who comes under them, they love them. Everybody has a chance under a tree. Well, that's a total opposite of bare root planting. No doubt, it almost makes you want to go out and plant a tree. A little later, of course, though. I'm a bit busy right now. Oh, my God. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from Salish Lodge, where we're kind of planning for the new I year. I know, I like here, this. You know? Spring 2013. We're already looking <laughs> ahead. Spring. <laughs> Have I got a project for you. What's that? It'll clean up all your food scraps and it'll make your soil way better. You're coming over to work at my house? No, no, we're going <laughs> to make a work box. Megan, you haven't lived till you have a worm box. I had an ant farm once. Does oh, that work? That's not the same. No, you can't get in close and factory. get personal with it. Look at this. There's a food list, breakfast, lunch, dinner, <laughs> dessert. <laughs> they like pizza crust. Yeah, hey, they do like pizza crust. So, they love Brussels sprouts. We're talking compost, obviously. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to make compost. And, you know, and, and by the way, these are special worms. I don't there know where any of the little guys. You know what? We should be seeing a lot more of them. Look at how wet this is. It's supposed to be the moisture of a squeeze sponge. Okay. So I've been kind oh, of bad. Oh, there's one little worm right there. Oh, yeah. They're in there. They've been eating the food. Okay. You know, they hide down below. And they keep they moving up. up. Yeah. Okay. So, so, but so we need to dry it out. We need to dry it out. And there's a trick you do. We need to cut up some newspaper. Okay. This is bedding. Now, there's a number of things you can use for bedding. You need about... The same amount of food as you have, Betty. Oh, really? Yes. This is all compost that they've made out of food I wow. put in. I started with a little bedding, and the worms, you got to get them. By the way, you can get a mail order from Seattle Tilt. So these aren't your typical garden variety, ha <laughs> ha? No, no, not your typical, no. <laughs> not your garden variety worm. No, huh? <laughs> these are special red worms, you know. Oh, I Fisher don't know if everybody else thinks like I'm them. as funny as I think I am, but you know. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right. So you have to mail order or perhaps go yeah, to Seattle Tilth. Seattle Tilth carries them in okay. their little store. So this container, a little bit more yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, don't overfeed them. What happens is... A little carrot, if, little yeah, celery, yeah, little tomato. You know, and, and look at how chopped up it is, Megan. That's the other trick. You put in a great big carrot in there. It takes them two yeah. years to eat the thing, yeah. you know. If you don't bury oh. it, see, they won't eat it. So so you get mighty schleppy when you do so this. I kind of like it. Yeah, really. <laughs> It's too wet, yep. it's too cold, yeah. so we've dried it out with the bedding, not Betty. Yep. And now what do we do? Now we got to bring it in the house. So you do this when your partner's not home. <laughs> you bring it what, in the house? Yeah. Do you at least put the lid back on? Yeah. Oh yeah, the lid goes back on. And you hide this in the basement and you put it in when your uh, spouse is not home because this could cause them a little bit of so, friction. needless to say, we had better hurry up and get this baby inside. Let's get inside. it in quick. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so indoor Oops. composting for the winter. And yeah. how much will this produce? Oh, this will, listen, by the end of winter, end of winter, this thing will be so full, I'll have to take them out and put them out, get the compost out and put it outside. How often do you turn it over? I do, well, I find that I'm doing it about w once every few months if I take good care of it. That's a lot of work for That's that amount. That's a little bit of work, I admit. But, oh, okay. is it good compost? Okay, quick. I'll look. I'll keep on the lookout. You take it inside. Okay. I'll make sure no one's watching. Ah, ah.
So Megan, you know, I just realized doing a worm box is like having thousands of handymen working for you for free. Well, then maybe I wouldn't have to do so much work when we got together. Oh, la la, who does all the work? You think? Maybe? Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco from Salish Lodge. Are you doing a bunch of entertaining over the holidays? Oh, yeah. I know. You always have people over, and it's like, okay, what the heck am I going to feed them for appetizers? So how about a fancy dip? Do you have any favorite dips? Oh, guacamole. I'm a oh, guacamole yeah. man. You know, but sometimes that just gets a little old because you have it every time I come over to your house. <laughs> so Lindia shows me some fabulous dip recipes, one naughty and one nice. As we head into this new year, entertaining is not over yet. No, absolutely So, Lynn, not. you have some quick fixes, yes. maybe, on yeah. how to whip together a nice dish? We're going to do a couple of dips. Love it. Yeah, and you know, when I'm entertaining, I like to do something warm and something cold. So okay. we're going to start with the warm and maybe a little bit decadent. Ooh, yes. so, I like it. Um, we're going to do a cheesy shrimp dip, kind of southern style. Yum. Yeah, okay. So you've got some. I'll let you let, I love it when I cook with yeah. her because she does it all. I'll do it all. Yes. So uh, Cream cheese. Heavy. Yeah, I was going to say cream and cheese. A little bit of mayonnaise in there. Okay. Okay. Yep. Good. And then some shredded cheeses. My lord, how many do you have here? Pepper jack, wow. mozzarella, and fresh parmesan. Go, go for it. Oh no, I just oh, like to just look looking. at it. Yeah, I want to see all those yeah. different babies. Yes. The red pepper? Red peppers. Okay. So just dump them all in. Yep. And some green, green onion. Onion. Oh, it looks like the holidays. And you know, since I, a lot of times I would put chilies in this, uh -huh. but since I used the jack, uh, right. the, the pepper jack, I didn't. Okay. okay. So a little spike. Okay. A little Worcestershire. Oh, I love wishes. And you can put lemon, but you know the uh, cream cheese has got a nice little tartness. Right. So I mixed this then, before. Yes. No, nope, go ahead. Go ahead and put, put the those shrimp in. in there. Okay. So while you're mixing, I want to tell oh, you about our shrimp those, because oh man, they smell good. I love our shrimp. Yeah. Okay. So we have this wonderful shrimp program here at PCC. Uh -huh. We do all sustainable American shrimp. Great. These guys come already peeled and deveined, but raw. So a casserole dish, okay, three fifty for about thirty minutes, and that's it. And that's it. So simple. I know. Isn't that beautiful. Okay. Yep. And that this this uh, eight by eight is the perfect size for this amount. And you know you can see there's a lot of other things you can add to this. Some sure. Sweet onion. You can go super spicy, a little Tabasco. You Yum, know whatever. Yeah. You like. I know you and I. I know. I like spicy. spicy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then I'm going to decorate it up a little bit, Megan. Over there, you've got some little slices of red bell pepper. Oh, cute. Yeah. So I just put three on top there, just kind of in a little triangulation. Yep. Perfect. And those will roast nicely on top. Oh. Okay, so we'll get this in the and oven. That's it. Yeah, I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. Let's put it in. Okay, so Megan, yes. while that's baking, Ooh. we can do item number two. This looks a little healthier. Um, yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. You think? Looks good. Yeah. So um, what this is is what a is hummus. It? No way. With a twist. Okay, and I love to do hummus. I love the simplicity I of it. I do too. But we're doing it with edamame. Oh, I yes. love I edamame. Right and I've green. never, I've always done chickpeas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all you need is fresh lemon, little salt. These uh, come, you know, frozen, so you just yes. blanch them just a little bit. Uh -huh. Great extra virgin olive oil, a little tahini, and garlic. And in that the is it. Yeah. And I would love for you to. I would, oh my lord. And then the accompaniments that go with yes, it. Yes, exactly. And you can also with this, um, Stick a little spice in there too if you want. Oh, yes. or you can add different flavors Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. This look doesn't that look a little heavenly? roasted red pepper oh, or, yeah. and so fresh. Oh baby, you know what? That's even fresher tasting than the chickpea one. Yeah, he's got that bright green color too. Well, good he's protein in the yeah, edamame. Exactly. Oh, I love it. So uh, I like the simplicity of it. Too. I know exactly. Yeah. And think how nicely this will balance our shrimp dip. Shall we? Take I know it's a little, <laughs> little, little fewer calories here yeah. than that. Okay, so is that baby ready to come it out? Probably should be. Okay, let's take a look. Oh my goodness. This okay. is not only smelling good, it's gorgeous. Oh my God, that looks good. Oh, that does. Okay, time to All try. All right, are you ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's do a little cracker. Can I get a little smaller cracker? <laughs> <laughs> well, well it's all baby, about the dip. It right? is about yes. the dip. Yes. Absolutely. So let's okay. just. Mm. I wow. can smell it. It smells so good. And you know what? You can taste the shrimp. Yes, exactly. Creamy. I love it. Oh my gosh, that is good. A little tart? A little rich. Mm. So which, really which one good. do you... So I would have about two bites of that and like ten of that. So oh yeah? Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. Nice. So we really Nothing. do have one for the holidays and your, you know, rich experiences. Uh -huh. And one for your New Year's resolution. Absolutely. I love it. Happy New Year. Thank you, Lynn. Happy New Year. Dig in. Okay, I'm an olive.
Mm. <laughs> Very good. So here's the deal. The shrimp creamy, delicious, rich one is around the holidays. And then you go to the edamame after and you're healthy. How about that? Yeah, but that edamame, it looks just like guacamole. But it tastes completely different and it's very good. And I love guacamole. Welcome back to Gardening with Cisco. Mm. <laughs> From Salish Lodge, and hey, listen, before we spend a lot of time drinking hot chocolate right. and browsing catalogs, we want to show everyone some unbelievably great plants that will get you through the winter season. Whether you're looking for foliage, structure, or flowers, these are some plants you need to know about. When it comes to winter plants, you're looking for color, texture, interesting form, and it's got to be tough. These babies have got it all. So check out these wonderful cedars. So these are true cedars. Now, this one is a weeping blue atlas cedar. These come from the Atlas Mountains in North Africa where it's dry as can be. As long as you put this plant in a spot with good drainage, doesn't even have to have full sunshine, you've got one of the coolest plants there ever was. And look at how pliable they are. So you can just shape this any way you want. I've used one of these for a banister on my porch. <laughs> now I'll bet you know what this baby is. This is a red twig dogwood. Talk about a cast iron plant. These can sit underwater in the spring and yet they can go with no water at all almost anywhere in your garden all summer long. Only thing I like to do is cut it down in the spring. That way it keeps these beautiful red twigs. This baby is a rock. Now you probably got this little cutie somewhere on your property because it's native from California to the tip of Alaska. This is snowberry. I bet you can guess why it's called that. It's one of the only plants with white berries and uh, this guy is native so it doesn't need almost any water at all it spreads slowly with suckers but I'll tell you a little hint if you give it a little water full sun you get more of these great berries the birds don't eat them till really late in the year but you know what's really fun to do with them throw them on the ground and pop them oh la la that is so fun if you want exquisite fragrance on plants that will bloom and thrive in the shade then there are two choices sarcococa blooms in february little white flowers that pack an unbelievable punch and then there is the queen of them all this is viburnum bowden tense uh, dawn and oh la la Le fragrance de le dieu. Oh, it's too good to even describe. And if you like evergreen, but you don't want conifers, then Ceanothus is your baby. And they come in all different sizes and colors. Some are big honkers. Bees love these flowers. And once established, you'll never have to water them ever again. And now for my favorite of all, a contorted filbert named Harry Lauder's walking stick, named after a famous Scottish comedian that had a walking stick made out of one of these cool branches. Talk about form. It has leaves that ah, are a little shaky looking in the summer, but in winter when it drops all those leaves and gets that winter form, how do you beat it? And it even has these cute little male flowers hanging down. And get this. If you have some filbert trees in the neighborhood or hazel trees, they will cross pollinate. You'll get little filberts growing on your contorted plant. Oh la la. One little warning about this. It's a graph, so little suckers do come up from the ground. They're straight. They're not all curly Q. You don't want those, so just cut them off and then you keep this incredible form. This does great in a pot or in the ground. Can't get 15 feet tall but it sure is a magnificent plant. So don't let your garden be boring in the winter time. Find a beautiful plant with great color, texture, or incredible form. You might even be able to make yourself a cool walking stick out of it someday.
And if you would like to come out here and experience the Salish Lodge for yourself, they're going to be celebrating 25 years this spring. Isn't that great? You know, the restaurant is fabulous. They serve honey that they have right here on site. Plus, there is this incredible spa, and you always want to stroll down to the waterfall. So come on out, Salish Lodge and Spa. We'll put a link on our website for that as well. Oh, boy. Hey, everybody, thanks so much for watching today. We appreciate it. Happy New Year, everyone. Find somewhere really nice and cozy to relax, because 2012 was a pretty busy year. 2013. Cheers, my friend. You're cheersing with a straw. <laughs> Goodbye. Have a great week.